Armando Hasurugan Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasurugan. In this video, we're going to look at the fed state and what the body does when uh, just after we eat. So just drawing some important uh, structures. Here I'm drawing the intestine. The small intestine, you could say, because the small intestine, in particular the duodenum, is the main uh, area where food is absorbed by our body. So within the duodenum, we have the end products of digestion, which are monosaccharides, glucose in particular, amino acids, as well as fatty acids and monoglycerides. Uh, and here I'm drawing the bloodstream, as well as the liver, which is the, the most important organ in metabolism and in storing these, um, these, these, these molecules that, are, that, that we will absorb from the intestines. Another important organ besides the liver is the pancreas, which is extremely important in metabolism as well. So just after we eat, there will be an increase in plasma glucose levels. An increase in blood glucose, as well as uh, the stimulation of the parasympathetic neuron, will cause the pancreas to secrete or produce a uh, hormone called insulin which I draw here as I. So insulin is a very important hormone in the fed state. Now back to the duodenum, the intestines, let's see what happens to each of these macromolecules just after it has been digested, uh, just after uh, we have eaten. So glucose will be absorbed in the blood. Glucose will then travel to the liver. The liver will start can, will store glucose as glycogen. After it's done that, the glucose can actually be converted to pyruvate to produce energy, which is ATP. Pyruvate can then also convert to acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA can enter the Krebs cycle uh, to produce more ATP, as well as carbon dioxide as uh, metabolic waste. Or alternatively, acetyl-CoA can actually produce um, uh, fatty acids, which then can form triglycerides at the end. Triglycerides are packaged up by the liver during the fed state. They are packaged up into what's called lipoproteins, which are essentially uh, uh, lipids, which, which are triglycerides with proteins. These lipoproteins will travel in the blood and will travel to adipose tissues. Adipose tissues are essentially uh, fat storing uh, tissues. So these triglycerides, once they arrive in the adipose tissue, they will be stored there as triglycerides. Of course, just after we eat, we, of, as I mentioned, we have an increase in blood glucose. This glucose can actually be um, uptaken by the adipose tissues and the glucose can then be converted to acetyl-CoA in the adipose tissues to make fatty acids and then triglycerides, which then will be stored in the adipose tissue. The glucose can actually be taken up by muscles as well, skeletal muscles in particular. The glucose can be used as energy to produce ATP and carbon dioxide as waste. The skeletal muscles can also store glucose as glycogen, just like the liver. Glucose can also supply the brain with energy. The brain's main source of energy is glucose. Glucose in the brain will produce ATP and carbon dioxide as waste. A thing to note also is that uh, the lipoproteins, well actually the fats within the lipoproteins, uh, can actually go to the heart because the heart uses fatty acids as their main source of energy. So when the triglycerides, when the lipoprotein travels to the heart, the heart will uh, utilize the fatty acids to produce ATP and yeah, 
and also it will not use glycerol. Glycerol will then travel back to the liver for recycling. So now let us look at some of the functions of insulin in the fed state, with glucose in particular. Well, insulin will actually stimulate the uptake of glucose to the liver by the blood. Not directly, but indirectly. But insulin will inhibit the secretion of glucose uh, to the blood from the liver. Insulin will stimulate the uptake of glucose to adipose site to produce more triglycerides. Insulin will also stimulate the uptake of glucose to skeletal muscle cells and also stimulate uh, glycogen production in muscle. Not only that, but insulin will also stimulate glycogen production in the liver as well as stimulate glycolysis in the liver. So now that we looked at glucose, let's look at what happens to amino acids. Well, amino acids are absorbed into the blood, just like glucose. Amino acids are taken up by the liver to synthesize proteins. Insulin stimulates amino acid uptake uh, from the blood to the liver. Now, fatty acids and monoglycerides are quite unique in that they are not absorbed into the bloodstream, but instead they are absorbed to the lymphatic uh, system. They are absorbed to the lymphatic vessels, and they're actually absorbed as uh, cholemicrons, which are essentially packaged up triglycerides. These cholemicrons, these packaged up triglycerides, will then be carried through uh, the lymphatic uh, vessels towards the thoracic duct, which then will essentially transfer these triglycerides to the bloodstream. Once in the bloodstream, these, uh, these fats will essentially uh, go to the liver to make triglycerides and then packaged up as lipoproteins by the liver and then be sent to adipose tissue to be stored um, as triglycerides. So the main things to take out of the fed state is that the body absorbs glucose, amino acids, fatty acids and monoglycerides and that they are stored. They are stored as glycogen, proteins, and triglycerides. So the fed state, what, what we see is glycogenesis, production of glycogen, glycolysis, lipogenesis, production of triglycerides, lipids, and protein synthesis. Next video, we'll look at the fasted state, and as well as the starved state. Yeah, thank you.